If it's been a few years since you last visited New York City, then you'll probably be pleasantly surprised by some of the recent changes. New York City is always evolving and I'm showing you new views, food, and transportation in the city that never sleeps. Welcome to New York. I'm Michael and I just finished my latest New York City adventure and I want to share with you some of the new and exciting views, foods, and ways to get around that have arrived in the last few years. I think you're going to want to add these to your list for your next trip to the Big Apple. Manhattan's skyline might be the most recognizable in the world, and there are so many places in the city to soak it all in. Our first stop is a new viewpoint on the Hudson River side of the island over at Little Island Park. Little Island opened in 2021 over top of a former shipping pier near the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan. This park is just so amazing. They've built this whole natural garden in the air above the water of the Hudson River. These pylons have such a unique shape and they hold up this two and a half acre open space. The most popular and highest vantage point in the park is on the southwest corner, which is a lovely place to watch the sunset or take in the view of the Statue of Liberty down in the harbor. There's an amphitheater that hosts concerts and events in the summer months. You can visit Little Island from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily for free. This is just one of the many new additions worth experiencing on the Hudson River Park that runs along Manhattan's west side. The park is located just across the West Side Highway from the Meatpacking District near Chelsea Market, so it's easy to find. Next, we're going up to the highest outdoor observation deck currently above Manhattan. The edge is on top of one of the new glass towers of Hudson Yards, which itself is probably new since your last visit. The Hudson Yards development was built over the train yard serving New York Penn Station, creating a brand new neighborhood and opportunity for new views. This observation deck opened in 2020 and is 100 floors in the air and offers two stories of vantage points, including indoor and exterior experiences. Do you dare step out on this glass floor? Try to book a ticket to go up just before sunset to see the city lights come on as the sun sets over New Jersey. Ticket prices vary based on the time of the day. However, I think it's worth the premium to come later in the afternoon for sunset. From my experience, my ticket was for 5.45 p.m., which is the time that you're allowed to enter the line for security and to wait for the elevator. It took an hour from the time we joined the line to the time we arrived at the top. Don't assume that the time on your ticket is going to be the exact time that you step out on the top. Hudson Yards is located between 10th and 11th Avenues, between 31st and 34th Streets, and is an entirely new neighborhood with a shopping mall and its own new subway station at 34th Street for the 7 train. The vessel is a 150-foot tall observation platform that is temporarily closed with plans to reopen later in 2024. There's easy access to the High Line from Hudson Yards, which makes this a great starting point or finishing point to visit one of the best parks in the city. New York City is known for the variety of food that you can enjoy. If you're not able to make it to some of the neighborhoods in the outer boroughs, you should check out these food halls that bring many diverse flavors of the city under one roof. First is the new Market 57 Food Hall, which opened on the west side near Little Island on Pier 57 back in 2023. Whether you're in the mood for Mexican, dim sum, sushi, desserts, or draft beer, there's a flavor of the city to taste and sip here. I've ordered from most of the food stalls here, and despite being a little bit pricey, I've found most of the food to be very high quality and appropriate portion size. Note that the market does close at 8 p.m. Also, there's a not-so-secret rooftop park where you can take your food and even your pets. There's a great view of Little Island, Lower Manhattan, Sunsets, and the Empire State Building from up here. It's free to visit the roof, which is open from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily. This gives a very similar view to what you can see over at Little Island, though the rooftop nature and semi-difficult nature to access <laughs> 
does give you a different experience. Near the South Street Seaport is the new tin building by Jean Georges. This new concept fresh food market and dining experience brings together dishes and flavors of the city. Essentially, Jean Georges' tribute to New York. The building itself has an amazing backdrop of Lower Manhattan, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the East River. There are 12 dining venues surrounding the fresh food market on two levels. With a name like Jean Georges on the outside, it's undoubtedly expensive. We tried a few of the bites from the fast casual counter, which were tasty. Even if you're not in the market to buy, it's worth stopping in just to take a look around at the interesting spices, foods, and desserts on display in this very unique and upscale modern space. It would be nice to come here for a sit down meal and a glass of wine. If you're near South Street Seaport, you should take a look around this historic part of the city, renovated for the new and modern New York. There are some interesting little nooks around here that date back to colonial times, as well as more recent past when these docks were active with the fishing trade. Getting around New York has never been easier. Whether you're arriving into the new terminals at LaGuardia or Newark airports, or arriving by train, you'll notice new infrastructure everywhere in the tri-state area. Getting around within the city is easy with the subway. But what if you want a view? Since 2017, the new consolidated NYC ferry service provides services to commuters and tourists alike, connecting Manhattan with Brooklyn and Queens. These boats may look small, but they've got some real power as they cruise up and down the East River, making stops at Wall Street, Williamsburg, and Astoria to name a few. Tickets are relatively cheap, and you can choose to sit upstairs outside as you pass underneath famed bridges or sit in the interior lower level if maybe you get seasick. The indoor lower level has food and drinks available for purchase. The ferry does run late in the evening, so you can experience the lights of the city from the water. There's so many sights to see from the top deck of the ferry including the downtown and midtown Manhattan skylines and the riverfront areas of Brooklyn Heights, Dumbo, and Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The ferry does make a lot of stops and it does take a while to offload and board new passengers at each stop. But on a nice day, there's not a better place to be in the city than on the river. Manhattan's two main train terminals just received great new additions. The MTA just completed the Grand Central Terminal expansion in 2023, known as Grand Central Madison, or the East Side Access, where Long Island Railroad trains arrive on brand new concourses built underneath Grand Central. It's beautiful and provides a much needed link from the east side of Midtown for access to Long Island, including JFK and LaGuardia Airport connections. Across at New York Penn Station, the new Moynihan Train Hall opened back in 2021. This grand new space in a former post office building welcomes passengers arriving and departing on Amtrak and Long Island Railroad trains on tracks 5 through 21. This gives serious throwback vibes to the original Penn Station that was demolished to build the Madison Square Garden Arena. One thing to know is there is no access to New Jersey transit platforms from the new Moynihan train hall, so you do have to go to the old section of Penn Station to access New Jersey transit. If you have PTSD about how Penn Station used to be, you'll be in shock. The Long Island Railroad and Amtrak concourses have been completely renovated to coincide with the new Moynihan train hall. There are tons of new food options, higher ceilings, and bright LED display monitors. If you're looking for the train to JFK, board one that stops at Jamaica Station to catch the air train, as noted by the airplane icon. This station makes train travel fun again. If you're flying to New York City, you'll find that both Newark Airport and LaGuardia Airport also underwent major construction. 
Both airports were once consistently rated the worst in the country. But today, with new terminals and new airline clubs and restaurants, these are some of the nation's best. This new fountain and luxurious new terminal space take a lot of the gloom away from flying out of LaGuardia. United recently renovated all their existing lounges at Newark and expanded the network with a lounge in the brand new Terminal A. These are my favorite in the system. What do you think of these changes? Are these new views, food, and transit enough to convince you to come visit New York? Let me know your thoughts down below. NYC will forever be changing, which just means more reasons to come back to visit. If you found this helpful, check out one of these videos popping up here and subscribe for more helpful hints. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.